afternoon everyone and happy Friday. I'd like to welcome all our participants, whether you're a regular attendee or joining us for the first time. I'm Jen Claire Wangari, representing Springwood Capital, and we're thrilled to have you here. At Springwood Capital, we're dedicated to your success, and that goes beyond financial support. We're here to provide you with knowledge, insights, and strategies through our monthly BSmart webinars. Today, we are embarking on a transformative journey into the world of money mindset for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship requires more than just business skills. It demands a powerful money mindset. This webinar is designed for entrepreneurs looking to supercharge their success and provides actionable insights to help reshape their relationship with money. During this webinar, we'll focus on three key areas. One, how entrepreneurs can stay motivated for long-term growth. Two, finding the balance between investing in business growth and personal financial stability. And lastly, positioning financial ambition within the context of work-life balance and overall well-being. This webinar offers transformative insights that apply to all industries. Remember, your path to entrepreneurial success starts with mastering your relationship with money. Now, I'm honored to introduce to you Mr. Erastus, a true inspiration, a mentor, and a trainer who has positively impacted countless individuals from diverse backgrounds. Erastus is an expert in financial management, relationship management, consultative selling, and life skills. His journey from senior leadership in the banking sector to becoming an author, empower, empowering lives, exemplifies his commitment to nurturing financial progress and personal growth. Welcome, Mr. Erastus. Thank you, thank you so much, Jen, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. A good afternoon to all of us and happy to see you, uh, quite a number of us that we have interacted with, and also thank you to Springboard Capital for the opportunity to share and interact with your members and also with the entrepreneurs and also with your clients. I think uh, this afternoon is an afternoon for us to just learn, to reflect on what's happening to us and also to just share from one another. So uh, I think uh, as we look at the money mindset for entrepreneurs, the first thing to know is that we are looking at our attitude and views towards money, how we take money, how we understand money, and how we relate with money. So it is more or less about our relationship with money, which in many times I call it moneyship. There is no such a word as moneyship, but uh, I say moneyship to mean the relationship we have with money because the way we relate with money determines a lot of things uh, in terms of the decisions we make and also the actions we take and the risks we en engage in. So to start us off, I would want to ask you to go to the chat and just tell me about uh, one thing about what people say about money, it could be, uh, you, you can use a simple language so that we all understand because in Kenya we say so many things and most of the things we say regarding money is dependent on our mindset, dependent on the way we are brought up. It also depends on the way we view money and what uh, formed in our minds, the opinions we formed in our minds when we were growing up. So what do people say about money? That's a question I always ask before engaging in a money conversation. What do people say about money? You can go to the chat, you can say it by yourself, uh, you can talk for yourself, you can talk for a friend. What is that thing that uh, people say about money? You can go to the chat and then maybe I can read uh, a few of them. Lucy tells us people say that money is everything. And you know, there is, we are going to look at what people say and then we are going to look at the truth because that is the foundation of the mindset. So uh, money is everything. Uh, Caroline says uh, money makes man mad. Yeah, I remember when we were growing up, we were told that God made money and money made man mad. So it was meant to be a tongue twister. And then uh, I see Anastasia saying that money is hard to come by. Esther Mwangi, um, the beginning of all evil. Dennis says money, can't, don't, money doesn't grow on trees. We were really told about that when we were growing up. Then Alex says that mtumzima hakosi pesa. Yeah, feel free to put it in a language that language yamta, because this are, is are, are an engagement about the real stuff on what really happens. Money makes the world go round. Wow, that is from Joseph. Uh, that is no, from Kajama. Then uh, Joseph says, uh, 
money moves mountains. Uh, Modoni says money does not grow on trees. Yes, and and says and uh, Kamwere says money cures everything. Yeah, man, money has a way by the way of curing things. Sometimes when money is involved, naskiam to accept masiku na ubaya. Then Jen says money is good servant but a bad master. Very very true. And then Richard says more money, more problems. Yeah, someone did say that uh, new levels and more money comes with the new demons. Uh, Judy Kamau, money makes your life better. Uh, Benson says, person is Sabuni Aroho. Yeah, the other day I was being asked by my son whether when the soap falls down, whether it becomes dirty or the ground becomes clean. But I think uh, money has a way of cleaning the heart. And then uh, to me, a person is from Dennis. Then uh, Kajama again, person is Saipan. Then Mudoni says, person Haitaki Kelele. Very, very true. And then I will tell you some of the interesting findings I found out there about what people say about money because it's a question I like asking. The other day, somebody said that Pesa ni kama ukimwi kila mtu husema hana. So everybody, I think most of us grew up with the environment where we are being told money is not enough. When you find money out there in the field, don't collect it, don't pick it, it's from the devil. This one of Satan, uh, as actually most of the times we talk about it based on how we are doing. Other people say, I don't need a lot of money because a lot of money I think uh, is problems, pure problems. And when money comes, they don't complain. Another one uh, told me that, uh, that there is no finance. There's no romance without finance. All manner of things are said. I think money is the most nicknamed thing that uh, uh, I have found across all cultures, both in your local language and whatever else. It has so many names. So I think uh, one of the most discussed topics, a um, emotive topic, is, is about money. And the way we talk about money, the things we say about money is basically based on how we have related with money, the attitudes we have, the perceptions we have, and what we were we, we grew up with. Unfortunately, a lot of things and mindsets about money is not taught in schools, it's not taught uh, even at workplace. You have to go and figure it out. And most of us have learned through what we have experienced. So today we are just going to look at the money issue from a slightly different angle. That's why we are calling it the money um, mindset for entrepreneurs. Because even as an entrepreneur, as an employed person, at the end of the day, all of us, we make money. We make some income. And this income, the way we behave with it, the decisions we make in our heads and the actions we take with our hands and where we invest in our pockets, that relationship or the hard head and pocket relationship is determined by you as the constant person because you are the decision maker. You give your money direction. I think uh, this has been uh, said about me. Yes, and uh, one of the topics we are discussing today is a topic in my book called uh, The Seven M's of Manship. So you will see it on your screen. I know it's appearing in reverse uh, because uh, I'm displaying using my camera. Now this book talks about, uh, I hope it's appearing well, The Seven M's of Manship. These are the main pillars to personal financial management. And today we'll be covering basically most of what I have covered in chapter one because you can't relate with money well, either as an entrepreneur or whoever you are, if you don't have the right mindset for the money. So it talks about, guides you about the spending, the investment, guides you about the budget and some of the decisions you need to make, but basically it looks at uh, money being an item or, or someone you relate with uh, that determines the direction you go with your money. The, uh, that's the latest book, uh, goes for 1,000. I'll be sharing the link so that in case you need a book, a uh, copy you can get, and it's also on Amazon. Uh, the very first book I wrote is called Guard Your Heart Password. This is an inspirational book that helps you to guard the four gates to your, to, to your life. It talks about uh, what you think about, the things you see, the things you hear, the things you talk about, because that's a reflection of who you are. And that copy is also available. It goes for 500 Kenya shillings. Now, every day when we wake up, we find announcements, we find headlines. And as entrepreneurs, I think we are the most affected people and also the employees, because we, we have a combination of uh, different uh, kinds of audience uh, today. You, you find the food prices are going up, the fuel prices are going up, you are, you are not consulted, can't go claiming that you are not consulted. Electricity, you buy the tokens, go and check your message last year, same time. And you see there's a difference in terms of the number of units and all the politics about it. You look at the transportation costs. But there's one guy down there who is moving at a very slow speed, who does not recognize that uh, every other person is on a race, like a cheetah, like a horse, like a antelope, name it. So you may not have control about what happens to these prices that are going up every now and then. 
You may also not have much control about your income, but it's something you can do about the decision you make between the two. So every day we wake up, this is the situation we are finding. Whether you're employed, again, it's the same thing. The bills are growing up, the rent is uh, going up, fuel is going up, food is going up, but there's one guy here who is being challenged. If another person is growing up, well, how come you are the only person who is not growing up? So some of these things I usually gather from uh, the exchanges that people do on social media. I pick a lot of lessons and I, I like learning and observing what people are talking about and what people are thinking. And it is true, the rate at which the growth of uh, the expenses is happening is, uh, is not commensurate to how the salary is growing. So this affects you as an entrepreneur because the person who you are selling to, your customer, you have to understand what's happening to them. So every day you find whether you're in business or whether you are uh, you're running a, you, you are in, a, in employment, you try to strike this balance. Again, this one, I found it interesting. You try to get a fulfilling career. You want a high salary. You want work-life balance. You try to touch one. The other one goes the other side. So unless you get an opportunity to be able to balance and make a decision between all these forces, you will always have that rat race continuing. So what is happening to us as entrepreneurs? And this just to remind us about uh, the, 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 the life of a, or the journey of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is that person who fills in a gap. You go out there and find there's a gap, there's an opportunity, and you take the risk. And as an entrepreneur, then you have to have that uh, a few characteristics. You need to take a risk. You need to be aware of the changes. Like now, there are so many changes. We'll be mentioning a few of them, what is happening to our country. And that's why you need to have the right mindset. You need to be so determined because the pressure on you is a lot. And then the resilience. You cannot hold on until you are able to be resilient and you're able to see the big picture. But in between, there is a very important person out there uh, in Astaric called the client. Unless you are driven by the needs of the client, then you'll always go thinking that you have to made your products for the market. And then you have the wrong mindset. You'll be pushing your product instead of going to the other side and finding out what do your customers want. So this is a re the reality. This is what is happening to our country. This is what is happening to the economy, even globally. We have a lot of challenges when it comes to the life of an entrepreneur. You may think that you are going through something that is very special, but you find this is exactly what's happening in the next uh, to your neighbor next door. And so as an entrepreneur, you are always looking for an opportunity. I want to play a short video I came across again on social media, and I will try to become a DJ for a while just to see what happens to this guy and what entrepreneurs go through every single day. Uh, I think it has some bit of sound. You can signal me, Jenny, if you can hear the sound. Mm, I can't hear any sound. It is just music playing in the background to just continue. You can see a guy has found a hundred dollar clothes. This one, even if you are the one, you change the plan for the day. And the player you know, is always looking for opportunities, very creative and thinking, where could the owner of this car be? And is it possible that maybe the handbrake is not working? It can move just, I just need an inch. Very motivated, determined. I just push it a bit. Maybe it will give me an allowance because $100? That's good money. But the owner must be sitting around here. So it's worth my time. After all, how much do I make that day? Because no, 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 you can sit, you can sit. All right. I think this is what we call in management strategic positioning. But you take a position and focus. You can see the entrepreneur, the way they have so many worries because of the risks they take, uncertainties. In a world where we don't know who gets the opportunity, whether it will go through the tender, the thing you're following up, but that guy, luckily enough, moment of relief, almost. But anyway, it's good to be patient. Another risk has just shown up. By this time, you're sweating because the bills are almost falling due. It's becoming tough. But anyway, that was an organized guy. Clears the nose every now and then. But here we are now, a Kajo guy, I'm not sure he can miss it. 
because after all, most of what he's doing is on the ground, and on the ground things are different. For those who say that I work eight to five, entrepreneurs work beyond. But Pesangu uh, Misha, that's how you miss opportunities sometimes. Now this this like looks like the dude in cell four. For sure, he's the one. This is the time that you are you hear that the contract is almost being signed. And that is the time because the hundred thousand, the hundred dollar note is there. Only to realize, after all, all of us were eyeing the same, same, same opportunity. I think this is at the point at which in Kenya we say Bora Uhai. So an entrepreneur goes a lot of challenges. And to overcome some of these challenges, we really need to have the right mindset. But I just thought, let me just check what others have said regarding mindset. What is money mindset and what's entrepreneur mindset? And quickly, I just looked at a, a simple definition of how others have looked at it before now we delve into the, to the main slide. Uh, a money mindset is an overriding attitude that you have about finances. You see, this is what drives the decisions that you make. Anything that you make, uh, decision that you make, the, the way you save your money, the way you spend your money, and the way you handle your money. So it is a set of beliefs. And I said these ones, they form based on the environment you are exposed to and based on your or, or, on the, the information you have maybe when you're growing up or even the way you invest because it drives the decisions you make about everything else. But you see, an entrepreneur's mindset, it influences that now the way you look at opportunities. And opportunities in terms of investing, in terms of expanding, the decisions you take, your risk appetite, you, are, you are, may call it that, and uh, anything you do regarding money then is affected by what the kind of mindset that you have. It is commonly said that the greatest barriers exist in the mind. So if you have barriers in your mind, then it means that uh, those mental barriers will be greater than your actual barriers, even in business. And finally, a good money mindset, it encourages ownership. This is where you take control of what is ahead of you or what you're going through without feeling helpless, without managing, uh, without blaming the government or without complaining. But this is the ability to see opportunities in difficulties and not the other way. So I want for a while for us now to just reflect on what, what is also happening because at this point when you're talking about entrepreneurship, when you're talking about money, I think it would be important for us to just ask ourselves, what is happening to our country? For us to, uh, to have a money mindset that is appropriate as entrepreneurs, just to remind us that we are operating in an environment that uh, we, we are now calling VUCA, which stands for volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, and ambiguous. And this is an environment whereby people are so uncertain. Things are changing every single day. We are getting news, we are getting uh, laws being passed, and we are getting affected by what is happening even in the external environment. Now, when you have a VUCA environment around you and around your business, then unless you have the right mindset, you are likely to remain at that position we talked about of helplessness or blaming every other person apart from yourself. And the other thing that we, we are going through under this environment, we are looking at uh, inflation. We know the direction it has taken. I don't want to go into this direction of uh, e the, uh, the, the economy, but uh, it is true. This is what is happening to, to our country. Although it is predicted, it is going to, to maybe go down. But as we speak, uh, there's still not yet... Um, stability, the interest rates are also recently they were reviewed, most lenders, they also reviewed their rates and that affects you. Uh, the foreign exchange, for those who are in export business, you understand better. I think this is what Esther does every single day. She understands well in trade. We are seeing also the prices for the bills and boards by the government who also were revised upwards because of the way the rates are going. The Monetary Policy Committee uh, recently, like two months ago, they also changed the the leading rate, the benchmark, uh, but last time I think it remained stable. So this is what these are some of the things that are happening. The finance bill, we are in Kenya, we understand this very well. And for those of you who have checked your emails, the last two or three days, you know, there's an email even from KRA, and or there's an email from your employer reminding you about the effects or the changes. We have a lot of politics. Uh, recently, we had the business being affected by demonstrations, but there's something I call others. And this is where you come in. As an entrepreneur, apart from all these other things, there's a lot that you are going through. Your business maybe is getting affected by personal things. Maybe your business is also getting affected by what's happening to your, to your health, maybe to your family, or maybe to your loved ones, or something that is affecting you as an individual. 
So that list of others is endless and it is personal. And this is where now the mindsets usually come in. There could also be giving up. Giving up may not be uh, listed here as a point or as a major issue in uh, economics. But we know that there are times that you feel as an entrepreneur, the gap that you are feeling where we saw that man holding the two edges, you feel you're getting tired, you feel lost, you feel helpless, and then you feel like uh, you are going to give up. But then somehow you continue, but then you, you, you wonder whether you're able or up to the task to measure, uh, to, to measure up. And what is the impact of some of those things? One of them is that uh, your customers, or generally all of us, our disposable income gets affected. So the capacity of your customers to buy, again, has been affected because they have, a, they, they have reduced disposable income. Your cash flow gets affected. You realize that even your, the payments are coming in late nowadays. You realize that uh, the, the, some businesses are really straining. Others, a few ones have collapsed uh, in the recent past. People are borrowing for consumption just to try and fill in the gap when disposable income goes down and people don't adjust their lifestyles. They resort to borrowing for consumption. So they are not investing and they are not borrowing for for, for investment and others are getting trapped into debts because you're borrowing to fill in a gap instead of changing the way you look at money and also your money habit. And also we are seeing a lot of uh, lenders complaining about delinquency. Recently there was an announcement that even the loans in Kenya, the default rate in, within the lending sector has gone up because people are not borrowing for production. And also people are ending up becoming stressed. A lot of entrepreneurs are going through bitterness and others have even sunk into depression and recently, we have even seen people committing suicide. And it all starts with the pressure that comes with handling the issues that come around you as an entrepreneur. So even with all this, so do we give up or do we develop a mindset that is a winning mindset? And why do we get the motivation for growth? And uh, this is the point at which I said we are going to have a short discussion because you have told me a lot of things on the chat about what people say about money and that is what shapes people's mindsets. But what are the facts about money versus the myths? What are some of those things that are truths? So for any truth, there's usually a violation or the second version of that. And uh, we are just going to look at the truth that should shape our mindset. And I think one of the ones that really stand out is when people talk about money being bad, money being money. evil. And I saw uh, also on the chat, somebody said about the way people say person is shetani or money is evil, money is bad. And even sometimes when people want to give a story about others, that's where they start. Like, what is the person a buyer? Then you are like, uh-huh. You know, there is motion uh, loading shortly because uh, we try to justify our position and our view about money based on how we are doing. So I want to state a few facts, maybe like eight of them, but I've listed them in the book in the chapter one. But the first and the major one, even as an entrepreneur or a person who is employed, the first fact about money that is supposed to shape our mindset is that money is not evil. But the love of money is the root of all evil. That is the fact that has been distorted by people. And they accuse money of money being bad. Money is not bad. Money is neutral. Money is good. Money is okay. But the love of it, even as an entrepreneur, if you start falling in love with money and relating with money through emotions, this is the point at which you start losing it. This is the point at which now it becomes very difficult for you to continue. And this is the point at which now it becomes very hard for you to resist some of the things that you need to do or some of the unethical means of doing business because your mindset is just about the relationship you have with money at, a, at an emotional level instead of relating with money at a level of purpose. So money is not bad. Money is not evil. It is the Love of money, that is the root of all evil. So money is good and money does not make decisions. Money is neutral. And that takes me to the second fact. The second fact about money is that money does not change people. It just reveals who they are. It exposes them. So we see people who didn't have money after a while, they are doing well. And they, we start accusing them that they changed and became different. They didn't change. They were like that, but they didn't have opportunity. So money does not change people, just reveals who they are. It exposes them. It tells us that uh, this is who you were, only that you didn't have money before. And you hear some people talking about uh, when they're accusing or backbiting about others. They say, this person is so proud and he has nothing. What if he gets money? Will we even be able to walk in the streets of uh, this city? But uh, most of us, it's just minus the opportunity. I saw a social media joke that uh, someone was saying, God bless you with money, but I may know my true colors. And that takes me to number three. 
Money does not have character of its own. Money takes the character and the shape of the container that holds it, the container called you. So money has no shape. Money takes the shape, the color, and the form. It's like a liquid in a container. So your money, irrespective of how you earn it, it reveals who you are. It tells us the kind of a person you are. If you show me how you relate with money, how you, you deal with money and how you deal with your time, I can easily pinpoint where your values are. So money has no character. You give it your character. So when you talk about money that is evil money, when you say people are doing wash wars, when you say people are cleaning money, money is never dirty. It is the actions behind the money that is actually dirty. It is what you do behind the scenes. And I think uh, the other fact is about uh, emotions. Money has no emotions. And if money had emotions, it would actually distribute itself equally to all of us. So money follows value. Where I come from, we keep talking about money attracts money, but I saw another day someone was saying that money does not attract money, that actually money attracts thieves. But uh, instead, money is attracted by value. Value is what attracts money. I found it a bit interesting. I'm very observant. I, I listen keenly to what people say. And number five, there's no too much or too little money because much money can grow and little money, uh, little money can grow slowly. And, and much money can disappear. We have seen it. We have seen people with little, based on the decisions you make as an entrepreneur, based on the growth mindset that you should, you, you should have, based on your motivation, less serious and all that, little can grow. Don't be discouraged by the people who are doing well because nobody is taking your opportunity. We may not have all equal opportunities, but we all get opportunities. So long as you are feeling in that gap that we saw, then you get an opportunity to also grow the little that you have. Unfortunately, on this side of the country, what we call little is what uh, another person calls much. We may not have all uh, equal amounts of money, but at any particular point, what you may call little or what you may call your gross salary is not even someone's uh, housing levy. And sometimes what you take as a loan, as a mortgage, is not even someone's loan application fees. So you may need to take an, a whole mortgage to pay, to pay for some application fees for a loan of a certain size. So people are not endowed the same, but either way, everybody gets an opportunity. And the next fact is that money does not give you peace, but lack of money can make you peaceless. There's no amount of money as an entrepreneur that will give you peace. There's no day that you say, I have made enough now. I can relax, I can sit down and can eat because my bands are full, my account is overflowing, I can live in abundance. There's no time that you feel that you are peaceful. As an entrepreneur, if you have a growth mindset at any particular time, you know that your main driver is not to make money, but to make an impact. When you pursue the passion, when you pursue that ability to fill in that gap, when you help enough people in this world get what they want in life, then money just becomes a byproduct of the actions you do behind. When you give people what they need in this life, then they usually say that it automatically turns you into a millionaire. So instead of spending sleepless nights, thinking about the way one day you will make a lot of money and then you can rest, and you can take a break and all that. The moment you take a break and you feel you have done it all, I think the most obvious thing that can happen to you is to leave this world and your maker will call you because you have nothing else to do here. We are created to add value. You are living at such a time as this in this generation to make a difference, not just in your life, but as an, as an entrepreneur to create opportunities so that you can become that bridge we saw in the first picture. So if your mindset is about gathering enough, then that easily turns you into a thief or a conman because you want to steal a lot. You want to be at a position when I, where you can extort. You want to be at a point where you can gather a lot that is enough such that even if the worst happens, you can either bribe your way, you can cheat your way, or you'll be so safe that you are trying to secure all the other generations. So that way we, we cannot definitely call you an entrepreneur, but you turn into something else. And the next, the next fact, which is very important for the entrepreneurs to understand, is that money does not, you, should, you don't get money by chasing it. You get money by attracting it. Money is like the birds of the air. When we were growing up as small boys, for us to catch birds of the air, we were putting in a system that attracts the money. So money is attracted. You attract it through value, through ethical means. When you attract money, then you are able to retain it. But when you chase money, it's like the birds. How many can you catch by chasing? You get money by creating value that attracts it. And money has a way of staying where it is needed. When money feels respected, then money stays. And to the next point now that is that the true value of money 
is not what is in the account. It's not what is written on that bill. The true value of money is in the actions that you take. Somebody said that if all the money in the world was gathered and put together and then distributed among every other person, in two years, money would go back to where it was. Because money has a way of knowing the true value and the respect it is given. What do I mean by that? It is that uh, money is attracted by value, back to, to my main point, where you create value. That's why as an entrepreneur, instead of competing at just product level, why don't you compete at value level? Because people are usually royal, customers, royalty. It's not into institutions nowadays. It's into value, into solutions. Who is offering it to me? Whether they are online, whether they have a registered office in Kenya, whatever they are, customers nowadays don't care. All they care about, who is giving it to me the way I want it and all that. So royalty nowadays is a very debatable question. We have seen people being loyal to people, to businesses. They have no idea where they are. And then the next, uh, as I come to a close so that I can also give you a chance to engage, is that it is hard to have three things at the same time. And that's what they usually say. Time, money, and energy will hardly be found in one person at any particular stage in their lives. For example, when you are young and growing up, when you are energetic and you are a young person, you have a lot of time, uh, you have a lot of energy. Unfortunately, at that particular time, you don't have a lot of money. Then when you are at middle age, you have money, yes, you have energy, yes, but you don't have the time. Busy, busy, busy. I know most of us by now, you are still doing your deals, you are still chatting, trying to make calls, trying to confirm orders and all that. And after this, you are rushing for a meeting or some of us are watching online, you are driving, you are wherever you are. You have no time, you have energy and a bit of money. But again, when you become old, without giving a definition of who old is, then you have the money, yes, you've made your money. You have a lot of time, maybe you're retired or you're taking a break, but then you don't have the energy. So at any particular time, it is very hard to keep all these things at a balance. And the second last one that I want to, to, to give you this so that we, I, I come to a close is that money keeps you good company. I've seen some people saying, my person is a buni aroho and all manner of things. There are some of us we tend to realize when they have made good money because of that artificial joy that comes in. Money is not bad. Remember we said it is not bad to have money, but it is good to also know that even as you have that money, what should drive you and what should keep you going is the passion, the commitment, and the impact you want to make as you are bridging that gap. The difference that you want to make is what determines how well you'll be sustained as, as, a, as an entrepreneur. So money keeps you good company. There's a bit of a courage that you, you get even when people have been paid, when it is payday. There's a kind of a, a, a joy and a comfort and a confidence. Some of us change in the working style when that tender has been paid, when the payment is in the account and you start feeling even generous and reminding people it's a Friday, it's a Friday. Some of us by now it's going to two o'clock. Your mind is not even in the office. You're already in places because you know the account is loaded. But when the account has nothing, that time you don't, you don't even have plans. But all of a sudden, when money shows up, people become busy because Pesa ni migu. And I think this, let me call it the second last so that I give you the very last one, is that money is a potential idol. And as an entrepreneur, if you give the place of money within your mind as money is everything, then you realize that even the very rich people, we have seen quotes from people who have the lots of money that even if they did whatever they did with their lives, even if they didn't work anymore, money would still be enough for them. But money can also be a potential idol, such that money can be used as a bait. And that's why they say that the fish that keeps its mouth shut never gets caught. So when you start becoming greedy, where you're being driven by the amount, by the greed, by the connection you have with money and all that. Even when business fails, we will find you in hospital. You will grow mad. But when business fails and you can go back to it again and you know you still have the energy, the networks, the capacity and the ability, then it does not give you a lot of uh, problems. Within no time, you know, as an entrepreneur, I will rise up again. And I think lastly, I close by giving the last fact that money does not get finished. It only changes residence. Money only moves from one entrepreneur to another, from one person to another. In the morning, go in fuel, like, ah, there's a joke that is well given about a past people who owed each other and money went around and still came back. So this time when you are saying, oh, there's no money, this is what is happening to the economy, Sasa Hakuna Pesa, we are very good in encouraging each other. Whenever you say there's no money, everybody agrees. Even when it is January and people say it's January and you ask the school equipment suppliers, they tell you, oh, Hakuna Pesa. 
as the people who are providing and supplying uniform, they agree with you. And it is not true. In general, the school suppliers are very rich. But you ask them, they say, hakuna pesa, ya, yeah, hakuna. Why? Because in the, on this side of the world, we like uh, uh, comforting each other because misery loves company. Hakuna pesa, mm, that time, you go to somebody from Mount Kenya, he's telling you that uh, he's struggling with a Kamjago someplace. Then when you go to see the Kamjango, you find he's on the 20th floor. And he's saying, Nikonaka project. Really? Because I know we are humble from this side of the world. You were when you were humble. Alafu nasema maze ni God. All of us, that was a set, ni kujaribu tu. So money does not really get finished. That time when you think there's no money, money is actually changing hands, moving on, new registration numbers are coming up, new approvals for buildings are coming up. Someone is starting something new and all that. That said, uh, so, so that then I can take questions. I just maybe need to give a, a small piece of advice to, to all of us as entrepreneurs looking at what is happening in the economy and all that. I think my advice would be, this is the time to ensure that you have cash with you. This is the time to ensure that even if your sales go down just a little bit, but collect your money early. If you have noted, there are some people who are struggling to pay you, early alone they were paying you in time. It's not their wish, they have not become bad, they have not become greedy, they have not changed their money mindset, but you see everybody is training in one way or another as we hope that we are going to have recovery. You better have a reduction of your sales even by 20%, but has, have the cash on your side because collecting is becoming hard. And I think my second advice is about cash flow. Cash flow is what is now going to make a very big difference. Have the mindset of not just pushing sales and people have your money out there, but it would be good for you to ensure that you have those uh, stable cash flows. And I think lastly, if you are to invest in a new project or diversify or go to an irritated area, unless you're convinced that there's an opportunity in the area that you want to venture into, I think it would be important for you to think twice before you go that direction. So I wish to stop at that and I wish to close by saying that money doesn't make you rich. It is your habits that do make you rich. It's your habits that make the difference. Thank you and uh, back to you, Jane. Thank you so much, Erastas. That was really an inspiring session. I think I've also learned a lot. I also believe every entrepreneur and everyone who's joining us right now has learned a lot. Uh, my takeaway home is um, basically I've been able to learn that um, entrepreneurs shouldn't be driven by the by money, but by needs needs for their clients. In short, you shouldn't be driven by the need to make more money. Be able to master your clients, be able to understand what their needs are so that you can meet their, you can be able to make more money. Also, the chase still continues. The chase for money is a daily thing. It's everywhere. So the chase still continues. As he said, pesa economy go. <laughs> also, um, as an entrepreneur, uh, money doesn't get finished. It just changes its residence, basically. So, akuna kusema, pesa imeisha. It's just changed its residence. And also, you don't you don't get money by chasing it, but by attracting it by your values. Thank you so much, Mr. Erastas. And I can see people are really engaging with us on our chat box. People are really commenting. People are interacting. People are networking. So I think I can um, take a few questions. I can see a question from Lynette, who's asking. What strategies can entrepreneurs use to identify and overcome their limiting beliefs about money? You, you see, the issue about beliefs about money are quite personal. And this one, you can only overcome it by investing in yourself in terms of understanding how money works. You see, today we've just covered one item. As I was saying, it is just, in my book, it's just one chapter. And uh, we invest a lot in learning about money in school. We learn about financial statements. We learn about analysis and all that. But we never invest in the, in the investor himself, in the entrepreneur himself, about their understanding about money. So the way, best way to overcome it is to start investing in knowledge. And also the second issue is to start relating with money, not at a heart level, but at, some, at a mind level. Uh, somebody said that uh, money is just a tool that takes you wherever you want to go to, but will never replace you as the driver. So you are actually to have you have, have to have the ability to master your money instead of money mastering you. You see, when money masters you, then every slight thing that has to do with your money, you take it emotionally and you don't make the correct decisions. You can easily become manipulated. You can easily start uh, corrupt deals. You can easily uh, get engaged and compromised. You can easily get, uh, you also lose your money. 
because you don't have that ability to make sober decisions because to you, you have taken as money is everything. Instead of knowing that the greatest wealth for an entrepreneur is the skills they, they have. It is the networks they have. It is the capacity they have. It is what they have surrounded themselves with. We have seen entrepreneurs going down and still going up from scratch and still over, uh, overtaking the people who were ahead of them, even when their business collapsed and all that. Why? Because we have one constant called the entrepreneur. So m money is constant, but our actions are the differentiators. They are the ones who, which differentiate the direction that you go. Thank you, Jane. Any other question? I like the way you emphasize on that, that the actions are what, are what really determine. Uh, the next question is from um, Amos Kirema, who's asking, can you provide insights into the connection between mindset and an entrepreneur's ability to negotiate effectively in business? Uh, that, 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 that sounds like a big topic because there's a topic we usually cover on uh, sales and negotiation skills where you use different strategies to negotiate. But you see, uh, the, the skills for negotiating about either a business, a deal, and all that may not just be based on your money mindset, but may be based on many other factors. For example, if you're negotiating for a transaction or for an opportunity or for a contract, for a tender, for partnership, and all that, sometimes you negotiate based on uh, the value you are providing. You negotiate also based on uh, the opportunity you are likely to miss if you don't. This is what you're going to forego for the other, the, the opportunity cost. But your ability to negotiate is based on your understanding. As I said, uh, which is related to the answer to question one, the skills we invest in, the knowledge we invest in, the attitude we, uh, that, that we develop, and the beliefs, and the mindset, and the myths, and also the relationship we have with money, determines to a larger extent the way you make decisions of uh, investing, saving, uh, risks, your risk appetite, and also how in general you handle money issues. Because we said money reflects you. It takes the direction you give it. And your money tell, it goes to where you point it to because money is neutral. It, it has no direction of its own. So your ability to negotiate and tying it to your mindset will be informed by how well you have invested in understanding how money works. If you don't understand how money works, uh, we have to talk about just mindset assuming you understand how the transaction is going, but your mindset will affect the level or the position you take even in a negotiation. You can take a subordinate level, you can in take an inferior level, and as an entrepreneur, you have to have that resilience to know that you are negotiating for value. If you are feeling a true gap, then you are able to sell out your value. If you believe in what you do, as you negotiate, you will not negotiate at an inferior position you are going to negotiate at a position of value. You're not going to negotiate at a product level. You are going to negotiate at a value level. You're not going to, to, to negotiate at any other level that is below the impact. You will show what you are bringing on board. Just like when people are being interviewed for jobs, they ask, what value do you think you are going to bring? And you find one person even based on their brand who will be paid something different for the same job based on how they negotiate for their value. And the first thing is to how do you see yourself? How do you carry yourself? How do you take yourself? Can you articulate your story about your business? Can you go out there at the high table and find your place? Or are you going there apologetically? If you understand your true value of what you're offering and who you are, then you can negotiate. You can ask for more and at least get whatever you are targeting. Thank you so much. Emos, I hope your question was answered well. Uh, we also have another question from Benson who's asking, how can entrepreneurs handle setbacks or failures related to money without letting them negatively impact their mindset? Thank you. How we can handle the setbacks, the failures without uh, negatively affecting our mindset. You okay. see, if I go to, if, if I to, to, to refer you back to where we were when we we're talking about the entrepreneur and what they have to go through, you find one thing that keeps the entrepreneur going is the determination that they have, the resilience. But above everything else is having the big picture. As an entrepreneur, are you going to have setbacks? Yes, your hands will get tired. You can look at the guy on the screen. Your legs will start slipping off. And sometimes you have to put in a support system below you just to keep you going. And for an entrepreneur, there's nothing like failing. Because instead of failing, you pick up the lesson. There's no failure that is uh, fatal unless when you decide to remain fallen. You can fail. Businesses fail. Yes, businesses go down. Entrepreneurs fail. 
setbacks will come. Sometimes out of the external forces, you will get uh, external regulations that can come and make your business illegal overnight. You will find yourself also being affected by something you have no control over. Do you call it quit? Do you say get contented and say hata hii pesa mingi, hata si muhimu? Ana unasema wacha nitosheke kidogo na ile mungu amenipatia and you say that you are not interested, you are not going to start this business, you become bitter, you get into bitterness because others are succeeding, you become stressed, you become depressed, and we have seen even people taking their own lives because of the debts and all that. When you don't have the big picture, then you're going to focus on the present and current failures. But when you see the big picture, where do you want to take your business? How do you see it in the years to come? How do you envision the success? What is success for you? Leave alone the amount of money that you're going to make. When you do the right thing, when you fill in this gap well, the people who want to cross over from this side to this other side, they will be willing to pay because they can see value. How many of them can ride on your shoulders? How many of them can walk on your solution? How many of them are you bridging? See the lives that you are transforming. If you fail, then you know how it is not done. You go back in there and focus on the big picture. Determination, resilience, accept change, prepare for the risks that are going to come, but focus on what the clients are saying. Yes, thank you so much, Erastas. I like the way you keep pinning point um, on the fact that you have to focus on the bigger picture at, at every juncture. Uh, I can see Monte Kajama is really, really commenting there. He's saying, uh, create value that attracts money. Don't chase money like birds. Thank you for that. And there's also a question from him where he's asking, how do you identify, create, and retain these values? What I meant by value it's not about like what we call the corporate values in an institution where you're saying that uh, we are bound by integrity, professionalism, uh, customer service and all that. What I'm talking about is the value the client gets. If you look at the screen, what I put on the asterisk, the person who controls what happens to your business is your client. So if your client does not see value in what you're offering, if I don't need this bridge, if at all, I can also cross over without requiring this guy. I will not be willing to part with money. Are they willing to pay you for what you're offering? And that's why I said, if we compete at product level, then everybody can copy your product. People can give the same consultancy that you give. For example, this training that I'm doing here, the session we are having here, the secret is not in the notes. Much of what I've said is not on the, on the screens. The facts I was giving, they, are, they, are, they were not even on the screen. It was easier for me to go through them quickly, but they, it's on the delivery. How I deliver is what will differentiate. If I give them to Jane, if I give them to Mary Gidua, if I give them to Protas and Inziani, he's going to do it differently, and he's going to be viewed differently based on the value he delivers, because the delivery mode and the val perceived value by your client, that is what determines how much they are willing to pay you for what you're offering. If you're offering a platform, an IT platform, if it is truly bridging a gap, people will be willing to pay for it. So that's why even when you're selling, the first discussion that should come between you and your customer is not the price. It is about the value. What can it do for them? I'm going to cross you over from this side to this other side. I'm seeing an opportunity where I can help people get a solution. I'm seeing a gap that I'm willing to address. That is how you create value. Now, retaining value is when you continuously invent, is when you continuously go back again to the same client and find out what changes have happened. You can see there's also change on our screen. Have you changed in terms of the way you want it done? For example, nowadays, if you're doing something, but it is not driven through uh, by technology, if you are doing getting into an industry that has gone online or where they're doing, for example, home deliveries, if you want to start bottling water and you can't deliver to people in their, in their homes, you want to start dealing with gas and you can't take to where the people are. You want to do laundry. You want, you're a dry cleaner and you can't pick our suits from the estates. We have changed the way we were behaving before as clients. Nowadays, personal, I never go. Some of, sometimes all these people meet at the gate. The guy who is collecting garbage, the one who is delivering gas, the one who is bringing my suits, the one who is bringing in water, and the one who is delivering some online shopping and all that. But when I pay and even pay delivery fees, it's because I can see value. Why? It's being brought where I am. How I am doing it, how they are doing it is correct. And I'm wondering, the next question is how much? Because the value is clear. So the best way to now sustain that value is to continuously learn from your clients. Have they moved? And clients don't say goodbye. They simply stop buying from you. If you are on this call and you lost clients, they are not coming to you. They didn't close their shop. They didn't stop buying. 
they changed where they go to, but they are going elsewhere. Could there be something that changed and they no longer see the value? Did they get an alternative solution? Is there a better person who is bridging this? What opportunities have you not taken advantage of? So I urge all of us if, uh, to look at if you are the one who do buy from your shop in the first place, do you think they are really getting value for their money? What difference is it making? A dazi is a dazi. It, I can buy it from anywhere. Coffee is coffee. I can get it from anywhere. But how I'm going to do it, you cannot copy. You can copy my product, but you cannot copy my delivery. Value is a perception. What is it doing for me? Thank you so much. Uh, I think you've really insisted on the fact that it's really important to listen to your clients and observe what they do. Thank you so much for answering that. I can see um, Cornelius Tonoy is um, saying that you've mentioned something about uh, book writing now that you are an author. Can you talk more about it? <laughs> want to hear more. Okay. I think uh, what I can say about book writing is that... Um, People see it, and I used to see it as a very difficult thing. And what I came to realize is that most of the writers are actually not natural writers. But the easiest way to start, what I would advise everybody on the call, is to look at what you like most and the things that you like doing, and the things that you like talking about, and the things people identify you with. Could be aligned to your skills, could be aligned to your abilities, could be aligned to your talents, could be aligned to your exposure, could be aligned to your experience could be aligned to your network or the platforms you plug into or the influence that you have. All of us, as we grow up, we have stories that we are creating. Could be aligned to your personal stories. Sometimes it does not start from far. Nowadays, we are even seeing children writing. My children uh, last weekend were engaged uh, by someone who helps uh, children to write. And uh, they just give their own story, a very simple book about uh, something they are passionate about or something that happened to them an expedition they had and the lessons they picked from that. So I would advise that instead of sitting down to say, I want to write a book called The Seven Aims of Manship. My personal story is that writing for me, I take a lot of time before I write. I would do one paragraph, I go through it again, I check again, I feel like it's not communicating. But what I did is that because of many invitations I've gotten in different institutions and different groups where they give me a topic to go and speak about, I prepare a few notes to go and talk about it. I realize later that actually people are asking, do you have something that you've written on this? Then I look at my personal notes, I find them scattered. I said, can I fill in the material? And don't come up with the chapters. Don't even come up with a topic. Don't even come up with a title. First of all, just jot down some notes even on the notebook of your phone. You can even write one or two words. Then before you go and check what others have done, First of all, pour out everything and just write it, not in whichever, not, not in any format. You can even just go to the translators. You have even Word nowadays. It can translate for you and transcribe for you. You talk as it types. Then you work with partners, people who can help you now form that into a book. We would be willing to share some of those referrals. People who critique, who tell you there's a missing gap, who will give you an opinion and who will speak on behalf of your clients. you see, again, we're going back to the client. Who is your reader? But right now, don't first of all think about much the topic, the title, and then the way they are going to follow each other, table of contents. If you start from the end, you will never do anything. Start from where you can see, which is that one thing that you can tell us, which story can you give the world? And there is no format and there's no topic or any restriction to what you can talk about. It is your story. So I encourage you, uh, as much as you work with the professionals, just write the things that interest you. You will be surprised your rough notes or your rough, uh, you, 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 the, the, your rough work. Some, some people, the people now who do that job of helping people to write their books can see something bigger than that. And I think uh, as I close is that uh, a book ensures that you don't die because even after I leave this world, my voice will still be speaking. At least do justice and don't go with the knowledge. Leave something that can live long after you're gone. Thank you so much. Um, I think all our aspiring authors joining us You've had, and I hope um, you'll be seeing new books from um, new people who are joining us. Yes, yes. Uh, start now, start scared, basically. Uh, you had mentioned you were nominated as an African Christian author. Kindly tell us more about it, how to reach you, and how we can buy your book. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Uh, the book I've talked about is uh, one you can get it on Amazon. Uh, I will be sharing the link shortly. Uh, and then maybe you can post on, on the chat. Then you, if you want to order hard copy, you can go to erastasmodura.com. You order from the site and then it can be delivered to you. If you want to pick 
uh, from CBD. We can organize my my contacts are there. Then uh, on the YouTube channel, we have some short videos about how to do budget savings and all that. And there are some new videos that will be coming up. On the nomination, uh, I was nominated as uh, for the African Christian Authors on the category of finance. And there's a link there where you can go and leave a comment. I think uh, the, fin uh, the, the, the final uh, nomination and results will be coming up in a month. So what I have shared with you is actually chapter one of my book. So you have almost as well read part of chapter one and based on today, you, you could be in a position to give feedback. So if you click on that link, then you just go, go and leave a comment about uh, the book or about the content. And that will go a great deal in uh, the nominations. Thank you so much. I think we've all had, in case you'd like to drop a comment, kindly click on the link that has been shared right now on the chats. And also, um, Erastas, how can we reach you? Yes, uh, my number is on the screen and you can also post it on the chat. So you can call me on that number and uh, email is erastasmudura at gmail.com. Also on the website, you can leave a comment and uh, on the YouTube channel and also on my FB page, it's Erastas Mudura Mwangi and also on uh, Twitter, Mudura Erastas or LinkedIn, Erastas Mudura. I think if you if you do that name to bring up all these others, you can be able to interact there. So as we come to an end, I'd like to talk a little about our Springboard Capital. Springboard Capital is a microfinance company that has been transforming lives by providing financial services to individuals, businesses for over a decade. If you need financial assistance, we are here to serve you. You can find us on uh, on your preferred social media platforms. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next month on the last Friday of the month. Goodbye.